welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we'll be performing a fundamental stock analysis of McKesson Corporation, ticker symbol MCK. So why should you care about McKesson Corporation? McKesson Corporation has been a recent addition to the Berkshire Hathaway public stock portfolio. It currently makes up a very small percentage, about 0.25% of the portfolio, which likely means that it was an addition by either Ted Wexler or Todd Combs, the other two investment managers at Berkshire Hathaway, besides Warren Buffett. So at the time of recording this video, McKesson Corporation is trading for just about $300 per share. Year to date, they're up 21%. Over the past year, they've done very well, returning 57%. Over three years, they're up 32% compounded annually. Going back 10 years, they're up 13% compounded annually. And going back 17 years to 2005, they're up 14% compounded annually. Keep in mind that this is not including the dividend that McKesson pays out. So McKesson's about $40 per share off of their 52-week high, which is up quite a bit compared to their 52-week low. They're a large business with a $43 billion market cap. So what does McKesson do? McKesson is a leading wholesaler of branded, generic, and specialty pharmaceutical products to various types of pharmacies, including retail chains, independent, and mail order, as well as hospital networks and healthcare providers. Along with Amerisource Bergen and Cardinal Health, the three of them account for well over 90% of the United States pharmaceutical wholesale industry. McKesson is currently divesting from its pharmaceutical wholesale and distribution in Europe and Canada in order to redeploy capital to strategic growth areas in the United States, such as oncology network and ecosystem and biopharma services. Additionally, the company supplies medical surgical products and equipment to healthcare facilities and provides a variety of technology solutions for pharmacies. McKesson Corporation was founded way back in 1833 and is headquartered in Irvine, Texas. So we'll be performing a modified version of the eight pillar analysis originally popularized by Everything Money, taking a look at eight different financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of the business based off of its fundamental financials. So let's get right into it. Starting off with pillar number one, we want their average five-year PE to be below 22 and a half. So currently they're trading for 41 times earnings and averaged out over this period, they're trading at about 62 times earnings. But looking at the chart, we can see that it has been all over the place. And so divesting from parts of their businesses have partially accounted for this. Anyways, that's an X to start off on pillar number one. Pillar number two, we're looking for their average five-year return on capital to be above 9%. So McKesson has steadily increased their return on capital over this time frame. Over their last fiscal year, they averaged 35% returns on capital and averaged out over this time frame, they're averaging about 21% return on capital. So more than double the 9% metric we were looking for. That's our first check on pillar number two. Pillar number three, we're looking for five-year revenue growth. McKesson has grown their revenues from $208 billion in 2018 to about $264 billion at the beginning of this year. So that's a check on pillar number three. Pillar number four, we're looking for five-year net income growth. So here we see the huge disparity between revenues and net income. Because they're doing wholesale pharmaceuticals, McKesson earns very small margins, but they're able to have huge volume through their business. So again, between them, Amerisource, Bergen, and Cardinal Health, the three of those businesses are an oligopoly that pretty much dominate wholesale pharmaceuticals in the United States. No other businesses are able to be at the scale that these three competitors are at. So in 2018, McKesson earned $67 million of earnings, and that increased to $1.1 billion of earnings in 2022. So that's another check on pillar number four, three checks in a row after starting off with that first X. Pillar number five, we're looking for decreasing shares outstanding. So McKesson has bought back about 50 million shares during this time frame. They've decreased the number of shares outstanding from 209 million in 2018 down to about 154 million as of this year. That's a great sign for existing shareholders. When you're purchasing a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in the underlying business. When a business is buying back shares for reasonable prices, they're increasing your ownership percentage of the business, and they're increasing the percentage of the business's current and future profits that you're ultimately entitled to without you spending a dime. So this is a great sign here. That's a check on pillar number five. 
Pillar number six, we're looking for five-year free cash flow growth. Free cash flow is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. It's this column here in green. Free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business, and a business's abilities to produce free cash flows are ultimately what that business is going to be valued on. Free cash flow can be used to buy back shares, pay down debt, pay dividends, reinvest back into the business, or make acquisitions. Looking at their free cash flow profile, McKesson has grown free cash flows just a smidge from $3.9 billion in 2018 to about $4 billion in 2022. One thing we can notice is that the business requires very little capital expenditures relative to their cash from operations and relative to their ability to produce free cash flows. So that's a good thing and that means that this business is able to throw off a lot of free cash flow. Averaged out over this time period, McKesson produces about $3.9 billion of free cash flow in an average year. We'll use that when we're evaluating the leverage that the business utilizes and then how McKesson's current market cap compares to their ability to produce free cash flows. Pillar number seven, we want McKesson's net debt, which is their long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term equivalents, to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by five. So McKesson, as of this year, has about $4 billion of net debt. When we multiply their average five-year free cash flow of $3.9 billion times five, that brings us to $19.6 billion. So that's more than $15 billion of comfort to spare there. If McKesson is able to continue producing the amount of free cash flow that they do in an average year over the past five years into the, into the future over the next five years, they will have more than enough cash flow to be able to pay off all of this existing debt. So that's a sign that the business is not overly levered and they have a big ability to produce large amounts of free cash flows. So that's a check on pillar number seven. Finally, the big pillar of them all, pillar number eight, we want McKesson's market cap to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by 20 to give us a starting point of what's a reasonable valuation to pay for the business. So McKesson currently has a market cap of $43 billion. When we multiply their average five-year free cash flow of $3.9 billion, that brings us to $78 billion. That gives us about $35 billion of margin of safety here. And based on their ability to produce free cash flows, it looks like McKesson is currently undervalued. So just because of that doesn't mean you should run out and purchase the business. This holistic analysis is a starting point. This type of analysis is saying that it's worth your while to do your homework and learn more about the business and come to your own conclusions. It's not any sort of financial advice, and it's definitely not a recommendation to go out there and buy this stock just based off of a beginning analysis. Finally, McKesson pays out a dividend that has been steadily increasing over this time frame. Here we're taking a look and making sure that it is fully supported by its cash flows and that it is healthy and sustainable going into the future. So relative to its cash flows, McKesson is paying out just a very tiny amount as a dividend. They have very large cash flows per share. In the most recent year, they produced $25 of cash flow per share and they only paid out less than $2 of dividends. So McKesson has a long runway to continue incrementally increasing their dividend well into the future if these cash flows per share continue at the rate that they're going. There's no other way around it besides that the business is producing lots of free cash flow. So to summarize, McKesson checks the box on seven out of eight pillars. They produce very high returns on capital. They've been growing, albeit slowly, over the past five years. They've also bought back a good amount of their shares. Their free cash flow has grown just a smidge but they produce large amounts of free cash flow relative to their need for CapEx. They're also very reasonably levered and do not employ high amounts of leverage in their business. And their current market cap has quite a bit of margin of safety relative to their ability to produce free cash flows. This business looks promising based off this fundamental analysis. So do more research. This is a starting point that says it's worth your while to learn more about the business and dive deeper. Again, McKesson is a recent addition to the Berkshire Hathaway public stock portfolio. Although it's a very small percentage of the portfolio, it was likely an ad by Ted Wexler or Todd Combs and not Warren Buffett himself. Even though they're not Warren Buffett, they're very capable managers who were personally selected by Warren Buffett to succeed him. And based on its fundamentals, McKesson warrants a deeper dive and more thorough research. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis analyzing McKesson Corporation, ticker symbol MCK. 
If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what company you want me to take a look at next. Thanks for learning about McKesson with me, and have a great day.